it's a, such a, so amazing that we can unite over a sport across countries and, and continents. It's, it's really cool. And we want to try and uh, take advantage of that. <laughs> Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I am Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 31. On this week's show, we have our first repeat guest, mm-hmm. not counting the swim run labs, which you can hear them now regularly on our Gear Talk episodes. We have world champion Fanny Kuhn back on the show. We had, a, this was a very interesting conversation. This was kind of, I, I'm just going to go ahead and call this our COVID episode, where mm-hmm. we wanted to chat with her about her experience basically winning Catalina, the women's division, and then going back home and then essentially being quarantined for months. Months. Um, and what that was like, and we we're following her on social media, so we we're seeing what she was doing, but we wanted to kind of go deeper into sort of the emotional side, like how she was dealing with it and all that stuff. And I think it was a really great interview. Yeah, I mean, she definitely opened up and was vulnerable and all sorts of stuff, and it was it was good. And we learned that she learned how to make sushi. Yeah. So more on that later. Yeah, more on that later. So uh, training update, we had another swim run practice, which is great. It's becoming a regular thing for we're, us. We're training for life at this point. <laughs> we, we don't know what races yeah. are going to happen or anything like that. We are going to be doing, a, I think, we're going to come up with some sort of swim run adventure. Yep. Like a bigger one. Yeah. We were inspired like by the Like a bad idea. Run. Yeah. <laughs> what, when? <laughs> we were inspired by the Swim Run Labs 50K peanut butter and jelly swim run they did a, a week or two ago, um, which is an awesome little thing. So be sure to go over there to, to check that out. But we'll, we have something. We're cooking some. Or, yeah. Some, something like that's going on. So uh, you, you want to really want to know where, where you're looking at finding us is, is in the Strava Club which leads right perfectly to our shout outs. Yeah. So you could take this one. This is about you. Okay. So <laughs> we're shouting out Vicky this week. She's in her Strava club. She's a fan of the show. And she recently found out that she shares one of her favorite movies, the big blue by Luke Besson with me after listening to our interview with, uh, Adam Skolnick. So I just thought that was like such a random thing because she does, she doesn't know anyone who's that's their favorite movie. I've never, and I don't really know anyone either. So, so we bonded over that. I've never even seen so, the movie. We need, but to, watch I need it. to watch you it. Watch it. Yeah. Okay. I'll watch it then. It's fair enough. So we also have a bonus shout out that goes to the entire Otolo sort of, we're going to call them the hype video crew. <laughs> uh, we know Rasmus is an integral part of that, but they just released their, their latest masterpiece, the 2020 Inkadon recap movie, video, trailer, uh, you know, swim run, porn. porn. It's just like amazing. <laughs> Um, it makes you totally want to just do the race. And, and we, like you've heard us say many times, we're hooked on this race and we haven't even done it. Um, and if you're curious about it as well, after watching this video, and this will be the last time that we mention the LinkedIn <laughs> course preview episode uh, is a really cool one to get a what's it like there and how is it to race there? Yeah, definitely. Um, moving on to feats of endurance this week. The award is going to Neil Cooper, who's in our Strava Club. He's just been putting in a ton of work. He's in North, Northern Ireland. Um, yeah, a lot of consistency, a lot of swim running. Uh, so, yeah, you know. And we also pulled the trigger and ordered said bumper stickers, which Finally. we gave you a preview of in the Strava Club. Uh, so if you have been granted a Feet of Endurance Award, you can preemptively send us your mailing address. <laughs> and when those come in, we'll send them out or keep your eyes peeled to your Instagram or something with a, yeah. with a note from us there. Yeah. What other stuff have we been up to? As you know, we're always getting into more and more things. Although we did not come up with any new projects this week. So I think we, I think we should congratulate we need, ourselves we, we for we not a, putting more work. Let's on think ourselves. of an award to give ourselves when we don't have an <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we also are going steady with the Swimland Labs. We've been doing the bonus episodes. We really loved it. So we're sort of calling that one the Gear Talk Show. So if you have any ideas of recommendations from maybe one specific shoe or wetsuit that you want to try to have us review to broader kind of categories, like what are our thoughts on goggles or paddles or nutrition or things to hold nutrition, we, we heard today, send those to us and, and we'll, uh, we'll throw it in, in the bin. But we just re- released the ARC Sports Orno Generation 2 Swim Run Wetsuit episode there. Uh, so that was a really good one to check out. So be sure you listen to that wherever you're listening to this. Yeah, and spoiler alert, we thought it was we, good. Yeah. 
we were uh, we were in love. <laughs> Other than that, so we our new project, the International Swim Run Adventure Guide, is up and running. We got our first submission all the way from Germany. Thank you, G Flow, for that. And if uh, you have a great training route, let us know about it, and we'll 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 create a page on our website where anyone who's traveling anywhere can hopefully find some sort of place to to do a swim run adventure. So look for that on the site soon, and we will figure out how what the best way to make make that look and use yeah. it is. Yeah, but keep those entries coming in. Um, now I think we should just talk about. I mean, I guess we already previewed it, but yeah, this week we have. An amazing human being, Fanny yes. Kuhn, on the show. Reigning world champion. And still will be the 2020 world champion yep. as well. She's also uh, one of the founders of the Wild Swim Run, which is such a great uh, initiative and nonprofit there with her and, and Mia that they run. And we did an episode with, with Wild, called Wild Swim Run, one of our yep. ones that we recorded in Catalina, which was a ton of fun. And um, we, we go just down the Fanny path this time, but great great episode and you really uh if you're not cheering for her and and it, uh you know on her side after this i don't yeah, see how you can totally totally yeah i mean this is a she basically told us how her life changed because of covid and we just really appreciate that and we think you're really gonna enjoy it because she's just a great person and still had some laughs even though it was serious and it's a great interview so enjoy yep okie dokie <laughs> All right, with us today, we have our first repeat guest. We have Fanny Kuhn, reigning Atala world champion, all the way from Barcelona. Hi, Fanny, how you doing? Hello, I'm happy to be on the pod. Doing pretty well, thanks. Yeah, so great to have you back on the show. Uh, like we we're talking before the air, I can't think of another another person we'd rather have as our first repeat guest. So so it's really great to, to be able to chat with you again. And what we wanted to do with this interview, pretty much everybody knows your story. We know your story. But what we wanted to talk about was sort of, you know, we want this to be kind of like the COVID, the COVID episode. And we met you at Catalina. You won that race. 2020 was looking like a great year. And you flew back home. So why don't you tell us a little bit of, of kind of like what that was like and then kind of how the world totally changed when you got back to Barcelona. Catalina feels so long ago, actually. It feels like almost eight years ago. Oh, totally. And uh, I'm now thinking back on it. It's It was so amazing that we could actually do that race and uh, this and that it was before everything that happened with, with COVID and everything. So, yeah, I'm just feeling really... I appreciate that we could go on that trip and uh, this way and I had a great time in Catalina and it was so fun meeting you guys and all the American swim runners as well. Um, but yeah, after that, we, yeah, we flew home. I remember people were starting to talk about the coronavirus and I wasn't just, mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking so much about it. Like I flew without the face mask or anything. I saw a few people on the airport that had like the, the face masks on and stuff, but then, I don't know, I didn't think so much about it that it was, I, I don't think anyone had any idea that it was going to become such a a, a huge life-changing uh, phenomenon in the world. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, we, I flew home and uh, I think, yeah, Catalina was the first weekend of March and it was already the, the second weekend of March that Barcelona actually started the the lockdown and uh, I remember I was just continuing with my life pretty much as usual and like with my friends I remember the day before the lockdown I was doing an open water swim and and saw some friends and people started talking about what was going to happen and and we just wasn't sure what was what we were going to do or anything but then later when I got home that night um it came out in the in the news and everything that uh, the restrictions was going to be put on from that Sunday forward. I think that was the 13th or 14th of March, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember right. And it was going to, I remember they said it was going to be two weeks where we could not go out of our houses. And uh, I was like, oh my God, two weeks and we cannot do anything. And we couldn't, I mean, then the guidelines were total quarantine or like yeah it's still the alarma like like they say here like you cannot go out only for essential things and um we could go out um grocery shopping by ourselves or 
like you had to show be able to show a receipt otherwise you would get a fine and stuff so it's not like you could just pretend you were going on a run to get some exercise or anything it was uh, pretty hardcore but also I think when uh, something like this happened it changes the perspective a little bit and you understand that you cannot just be selfish and think about your training when there's something bigger going on in the world but yeah so then we after um that, that in the beginning, I thought it was, okay, two weeks without going out of the house. I think this could be a fun challenge to do, like, just as a, I don't know, like a little challenge to mm-hmm. to work out at home and just be, I don't know, do home workouts. And I, I was starting to get really creative and doing a lot of things on my carpet. And I, I think I posted a lot of things on, on Instagram also with some challenges and things like that. But uh and that was two weeks, but then they extended this this quarantine each two weeks all the time. So it ended up being almost three months, I think, in total quarantine. So it was it was kind of crazy. I mean, if I would have known that from the beginning, I, I don't know how I would have felt. But um, yeah. I guess it was a good thing that they did it every every two weeks. Otherwise, it would have been hard to cope with. I feel like uh, Barcelona had one of the more strict. Uh, shelter in place. I mean, California also had a pretty strict one, but um, they kind of started allowing people to go outside for hikes and runs and stuff almost within a couple weeks. So how did it feel that you were almost, you had it worse, quote unquote, worse than other people that you, you can even go out and will you remind us how, what square footage your, your little apartment is that you and your, your partner were, were living in at the time? Yeah, it, I, I, we haven't ever ever measured it, but I think it's around 30 uh, square meters. I don't know what that would be in, oh, in feet. I like cannot do that in my head. Feet, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but actually now we have moved because <laughs> I think we realized we had a little bit too, too little space during the, the whole quarantine. <laughs> so now we've moved to a, to a bigger apartment. <laughs> so that's nice. But yeah, during the whole quarantine, we were there. So... Yeah, that I guess. Yeah, we had some some of the harder restrictions. I think Italy was about the same, also. But I think also it was needed here because how the the culture is. Everyone is so like you you kiss each other to say hi and bye, and the the streets uh-huh. are small, and and people just are so social here. So I think it's probably was needed with something more strict to to contain the the virus, also. Yeah, and everybody's in everybody's face all the time, and in in, uh, in Spain and Barcelona in particular, I think now. I mean, I, I guess it must have been hard too. I mean, it was hard for us seeing, you know, on Instagram, you see everyone in Sweden still having a grand old time swimming, doing everything. Were you like, oh man, if I could just get back home to Sweden, like maybe I'll be able to train? Yeah, I was I was thinking about it. I guess I could probably have, have gone home also um, after a while. I think it, there was a while there was no flights and so on, but uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking about it, maybe going home, but I mean, I have my life here and my husband right. here also, and it would be kind of weird. I didn't really want to leave him here also by himself because he he works here also. So it would be, um, it would have been a bit strange, I think. And also, maybe my, I might not have been able to come back. So it was it was a, a bit tough. Yeah. So I, I kind of had to stay there. But uh, but yeah, I was actually able to go home now, like two weeks ago. So it was nice, oh, nice. to see my family and stuff. But uh, but yeah, now the the quarantine is is not really in place yet. But yeah, also with the I don't know. In the sometimes I was a little bit jealous of the Swedes that that they have different different um, conditions Approaches, there of, yeah. of training <laughs> yeah. and stuff. But I mean, it's not. It's you gotta live life where you are, and and I understand that it has to be different in in Spain. So it was not that big of a deal. And I'm I'm honestly I'm happy for the people that could actually go out and exercise you you really realize what an important part it is of your life when you get something like that taken away from you it really is a difference absolutely and and it's you you can hear the the type of person that you are just in your answer about how um it seemed to me listening to you is like swim run is a very top priority in your life but you realize that the greater sort of good of you know, the country that you lived in and even the city that it did have to take a little bit of a deprioritization, meaning like it moved down and like the health of your friends and neighbors and family and fellow country people is more important 
than than kind of the swimming. And I think that's Chris and I try to remind ourselves of of that stuff as well. But I, I you you touched on a really great point that that kind of the the first workout after the quarantine was lifted. I remember you were all smiles and I think you went for like a little <laughs> ocean ocean swim or something like maybe walk us through that kind of first three months you haven't really done any outside activity or other than you know going to the grocery store to get a sandwich or whatever how was that first workout back I mean what what sort of levels of appreciation did you have for everything <laughs> at that point yeah it was I mean I remember because first we could only if I remember, they changed it so we could go out one hour during the day to exercise during certain hours. It was like different hours for different type of people. So it was for people, I think, um, I, I don't can remember which age it was, but like under 65, you could go out before 8 in the morning and between 8 and 11 at night. And we could choose that one hour during those times. And then they had um, for... Um, then they had a special hour for families and a special hour for for um, oh, um, people like seniors and, and older people. Um, but yeah, so the first first they they hadn't opened the beaches. I couldn't actually go swimming. So the first thing I did was going for a for a run in the in the the mountains here in the city in the, in Montreal. And it was I remember I was kind of scared actually to go out on the street first because it's so it was so like unusual that I hadn't done it for a while. It's like, oh, wow, the police is not going to stop me now and I, I can actually go and do this. So then it, it was just an amazing freedom. And it's it's some, it's some like a mountain with some trails and some forest. It was just nice to see some trees again. It was wonderful. And just breathe some 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 kind of semi-nature air. It was, it was amazing. And it just makes you really appreciate that what it is to exercise and maybe be able to move like I'm, I'm a person that I'm always almost always going somewhere or like on the way somewhere like biking everywhere or running and walking and it's, it's just been really hard to be still some for so much time so it was it was really an amazing feeling so I have a question and we promised not to tell the Barcelona police that first hour did you did you go the whole hour or was it a little bit longer hour and 20 minutes maybe hour 25 uh, and uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, the statute of limitations is up on it. You're safe. Yes. Um, and, and was well, it? I, we, promise I was responsible. And, oh, I'm, uh, I'm sure. Then, yeah. then it was not. We didn't have masks actually, so we didn't have to run with the masks and stuff. So it was good. But, and yeah. uh, and were there a lot of people exercising once it was lifted, or was it still yes. pretty dead? Yes, on the it was because then at that time I went to the mountain, but then. We, we used to live by the beach and there's there's like a, a beach walk and the first days after confinement it was like a highway of people just wow. biking and running and people usually do not go out and run at seven o'clock in the morning in Barcelona it's usually super empty but yeah. it was like so much people like now it's not like that anymore I, I kind of wish that that people would have continued exercising and stuff but it was it was yeah. really a change well, you know, it's funny. First yeah. time I went to Barcelona, I did some early run around the whole city and it was pretty early. It was like 637 or something. Mm-hmm. And um, people were coming out from the bars and they were like cheering me on because I was like the only person <laughs> working out. They're like, bravo, bravo. It was, it was very, very, very funny. We, we had a similar yeah. thing here in California or the Bay Area and I kind of throughout the United States. It's like as soon as everyone was told you, you can't go do a hike or a walk, everybody wanted to do that. <laughs> so part of me was a part of, you know, I was kind of a little bit like, wait, where were you guys running these trails? You know, six months ago before all this happened, you weren't. But now the trails are really clogged and I'm trying to get a run in. But I did appreciate that people were, were getting out in, in nature and kind of experiencing that. And I hope that some of that stuck with at least a, a small portion of those people that, hey, they do enjoy kind of being out in nature and getting to what we all love about swim run, about just being and moving through nature and everything. Hopefully more people get to, they got to experience that. So hopefully that kind of really sunk in with them and that's something that they continue to doing. Are you are you kind of seeing that there in Barcelona? Yeah, I hope so too. But I think when 
when they allowed the bars to open, I think people use their hour to go to the bar instead of <laughs> going running, maybe. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I hope it's it's it made people realize that it's important to actually be able to go out and, and exercise and being healthy also. Diving a little bit more into swim run, you know, you and Desiree were sort of poised to defend your world title. Uh, the season started off great. You crushed Catalina. Um, how how was that emotionally for you, knowing that you're sort of losing your top end fitness, um, knowing that it's going to be hard to kind of get back to that level? And then ultimately, um, you know, I mean, the world championship got canceled, so it's... I guess it's a moot point on, on some level, but um, but how are you feeling about sort of losing your fitness and and sort of the struggle that you might have to, to kind of get back to your top form? Yeah, and I mean, it was it was not easy. I mean, as an athlete, you know yourselves, you just want to work out all the time and and uh, move towards your goals and get mm-hmm. better and, and fitter and so on. Um. But I think I have to actually thank the quarantine a bit because it it made me realize that actually I my body and and my mind needed a break from everything because I I have been competing like my whole life as a competitive swimmer very intensely all through high school and on uh, national international level and then in Division One in the U.S. for swimming and then. I never really stopped very much, and I then I continued on with swimmer and on a very high level mm-hmm. many years, racing and training a lot, and um, I think I mean towards the end of last season I started feeling a little bit of, I think both mentally and in my body I I, I felt tired and and uh, then I mean I was so ex- it was it's always so exciting like it's a new exciting race that you want to try so you want to keep on training for that race and then it was Catalina that I absolutely could not miss so I got in quite good shape for that and then I think then when the quarantine came I think it just told my body just hey Fanny you need a break so quite early on I realized that I just should just not force it and I'm just going to take this break and let my body heal a little bit and these these things are a little bit of like women health but I didn't have my period for a long time and I got it back so Mm. it's a good thing and um, I know it can be very dangerous if you don't have your period for a long time and I started to have some the past two years I've had some bone injuries also that made me scared and and so on so I think in the end it was it was good that this quarantine got me to just take a break and and be a little bit chill for a while and now so that that made me realize quite early on that I had no chance in keeping up with Desiree for for the World Championship. So even actually a little bit before we knew it was canceled, I I had uh, decided I was not going to do it, and and this year I was going to do it with um, in a mixed team instead. Um, but um, but yeah, it was it was such a hard decision to to make because it's been a very big part of my life the past five years that I've done it and it's it's the highlight of the year so it was difficult but I think if I would have decided to do it and then try and stress and get in shape after the quarantine it wouldn't have been so healthy either so now I'm kind of taking my time getting in shape again I'm I'm not quite there yet but in the swimming maybe but in the running I'm still uh, working it up slowly to 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 get in shape again but 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 yeah that's that's kind of the story about everything that I think at the end it was, it was time for a break and, and I've taken it and I, I feel healthier and stronger now. So, so it's, it's better. Wow. We really appreciate you, you sharing all that. And I think we, we've kind of actually heard that point from a few other of the top end, uh, Otolo swim run athletes is that they were kind of getting a little bit of this burnout that you were talking about. And either if it was a planned sort of break um or a rest or recovery period but uh it ended up being a, a kind of a forced one for most folks um th- but that's a that's a really really interesting uh points that you that you brought up there and i i think a lot of people should should sort of take that as a little bit of yeah everyone's trying to jam as much stuff into their life as they can but it is important uh that recovery 
uh, rest and relaxation, not just for your mental and physical health, but you know, there's other stuff going on with your family and different, different things. So I think that's, that's good. I mean, you know, we wish it was under a little bit better circumstances where it wasn't forced, but uh, <laughs> I think it's a really positive thing that you were able to adjust your, your kind of mental outlook. It sounds like pretty quickly on, on how the season was. I can't even imagine how kind of gutted you would feel where you see, you know, you, your part, your swim run partner being in training at almost full intensity and, and keeping up with right. everything. And you just kind of see yourself slipping off uh, further, getting further behind and, and more and more behind. But um, yeah, just like when I swim with Chipper, I just like we're not tethered. <laughs> I just I just keep getting farther, farther <laughs> behind. Yeah, I felt a little bit like that. It's I mean, it's it's not easy to deal with, like having to get out of shape and, and stuff and, and getting back in shape. It's it's not it's not nice, but it's it's things that take some some time. Also, you can't really rush it either. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, it's it's I think it was good in the end. And uh, the thing with with rest when you train really hard, it's it's important. I think in in your every everyday training week to to plan for it also. And I don't know, I just learned more about my body every year that I have do, done, like especially endurance sports, like what you need and that maybe. I mean, I've, I've, I remember I've done things like training really hard. And then my rest day, I went with friends and like walked all over the city sightseeing or something like that. And that is not really rest either. Yeah. Like you have to think about <laughs> what you actually do on your, on your rest right. days also. Not just go 100% and do all the other things that you might miss out on because you were training or something like that. You know, you have to actually have to give your body some time to recuperate and, and rest as well. Totally. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's somewhere in between uh, sitting on your couch and, and drinking a bunch of beer and then hiking 13 miles throughout the city. Like there's a happy medium somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> did you pick up any interesting <laughs> hobbies or habits during quarantine of being inside that you kind of, you know, maybe it's journaling or meditation or anything like that, that you're going to carry forward uh, throughout your, you know, it sounds like you, the quarantine for you was a, a massive kind of learning experience, not only about yourself and kind of your body, but was there anything that, that you added to your routine um, that has stuck? Um, yeah, I started doing like a little bit of a yoga session in the morning that, that I've kept not every day, but, but uh, most days, I think that is nice. I've, I tried to do meditation, but I don't know what is with me, but I just don't get it. Like I cannot do it. I just cannot sit still and uh, and 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 meditate. I think yoga works better for me because then I have have something to think about, like the different positions of the body and breathing and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I have just haven't made meditation work for me. I don't. I, maybe maybe I'm just I probably just do it wrong and haven't given it the proper chance. But I have I've heard many people that have had have seen very good benefits from that. But but for me, I think yoga is a little bit better um and then i did i took some catalan classes as well and um, online so i started to study that language of the place that i live i mean it's totally fine to get by by spanish right. here but many of my friends speak catalan and they always have to speak spanish with me so i thought maybe it's time to pick that up so um i'm trying to work on that also and now I don't take classes anymore, but I try to study it a little bit um, on the side. Um, I, I don't know what else. I, I can't really remember anything else that I Do you that get I any, uh, you making any jelly or sourdough bread or anything? That was really popular here in the United States, sourdough. <laughs> everyone, yeah, everyone, everyone was baker. baking bread for a couple months, and then everyone got sick of it. <laughs> um, I've always liked cooking, so that's something I've always done and kind of, nerdy about healthy foods and stuff like that so that kind of I did but of course I it was more time to cook and you couldn't eat out so it was I did cook a lot of new things um did some homemade sushi that was fun oh um yeah it's not that hard actually you just have to get the the rice right yep and then I <laughs> that's my biggest struggle is the is the sticky rice yeah you gotta really <laughs> yes. and I have a problem with um 
I have the same problem with like burritos and anything that you put inside of anything else. I just try to jam so much <laughs> stuff in it. Like when I'm making a smoothie, I'm like, ooh, yeah. this looks good. And then my smoothie's full to the top of the blender and I have like 42 ounces yeah, of smoothie then to expl- drink. There's still smoothie on a ceiling yeah. from where it exploded. <laughs> So the I'm same seeing thing your with sushi in front of me, like just like <laughs> a tiny bit of rice and just like yeah. things and things and things on top of it. Yeah, like hundred uh, percent. It won't even shut. That's the problem. It won't even roll up. So it's like I kind of hold it like a big sushi. It's taco like a like an open yeah giant taco open face sushi roll. <laughs> like a, a sushi burrito. <laughs> yeah. They do have sushi burritos. Yeah, there. that's actually they a thing actually in San Francisco. Yeah. Sushi rito is what sushi they're called. Rito. Um, oh really? Yeah, I cool. we'll bring you one next time. <laughs> so quarantine kind of lifts. You're able to go out for an hour. Currently, kind of, I guess I'm I'm, I'm kind of curious. You know, you're you as elite as it gets in swim run. How do you think about or how do you approach? You know, maybe with yourself or your coach or whoever your your Desiree or whoever you're working with. How do you kind of a, approach that that? Um, ramp back into training to kind of achieve that or, you know, start building back up towards that level of fitness that you have? I just started with some shorter workouts, like not those long ones that you get to do, like in, maybe in the middle and the end of the season and and increased little by little the, the amount of kilometers in running, for example. And for the running, I actually also contacted a running technique coach here in Barcelona and I took a class with her. Uh, and, uh, just to, cause I've, I've always struggled with the running. I still don't think I'm a good runner, even though maybe I should say that I am, but, um, I think I still run like a swimmer and not so good at it. And I've never really taken the time to work on my technique. So I'm trying to do that a little bit better now that I have time. Um, and, uh, swimming, I, I think because I've swam so much through my life, that was a bit easier to get into. I'm still don't I'm still not back at my like usual splits and times that I that I train um but close to it at least um and then I really like to train with in groups and with people so it's still now they close down most of those things again so uh, for example I usually go train with a trail trail running group here in Barcelona in the mountains and I don't go with them now so i think i think i have a harder time pushing my myself by myself when i train by myself so so that's a bit of a bummer but but i'm i'm trying to take it just little by little and um and yeah increasing the the distance and uh, and the intensity as i as i go along but i don't have like a huge specific plan because i don't know exactly when my next race is going to be either so we we'll see about that. That was actually what I was going to ask. I mean, so so you're trying to get fit again, um, but it sounds like you you don't have like a like like your comeback race yet. What what's what's your thought on that? Like, are you thinking like you might just take the whole year off from racing and then come back next year at Catalina, hopefully, mm-hmm. um, or <laughs> or are you thinking you might jump into another Atala race or Costa Brava if it ends up happening or something like that? Yeah, I think if I if I feel that I'm in in shape, I might do that, and that I will have to consult with this Desiree which one that would be and, and stuff. But um, I kind of just want to take it in my pace to to feel like I'm not rushing things to to get injured or something like that. Um, I'm signed up to some open water races in the in September here, like in the, in Spain, but uh, I'm not sure if they are going to be. Uh, like for now, they're on on track to be held, but but I think with these circumstances, I you never yeah. know what's going to happen either. Totally. So totally. so we'll see. Um, and then uh, so you know, uh, when this airs, it'll be a couple weeks after after Engadin. Um, did you have any any FOMO <laughs> seeing like Desiree win with her new mix partner, mm-hmm. or just like how beautiful? I mean, it looked like a great weekend for for racing. Um, what were your what were your sort of emotions uh, seeing that happen? Yeah, a little bit actually. I, I was it looked amazing the the race, and I, I kind of wish I was would have been there to be honest. But then it was also very very fun to follow it like from mm-hmm. here and like 
check the split times and I was following Desiree and uh, and Victor that she competed with and they were like a little bit behind in the beginning but then I remember remember that she usually is very smart and like don't don't push in the beginning and then they they just took off and they were leading the whole race and they won by by a lot so in the mixed category so it was, it was really fun to to follow them and and everyone else from from a distance for once as well. Right, right. So, so yeah, yeah. We we but were definitely, yeah. we were also following along because you know we we're sort. Of, I feel like I'm getting sort of obsessed with that race. I mean, after doing the research for this this course preview episode we did and stuff. I mean, it just looks so amazing and seeing all the pictures and you know Atala always does a great job to just make you really. You know, just feel envious yeah. <laughs> for everyone that's that's. I out can there. imagine, yeah. After all the research you did on it, and like having everyone tell you about it, I, I, I think probably we will see you in Inga the next uh, year. No? Yeah, hopefully. yeah, it's it's possible. <laughs> no, it's it seems like an amazing race. It really does. So yeah, so it sounds like you know you're you're sort of getting back to your normal life in this sort of new normal. Is there anything that you think you're going to take with you different or, or you're, that you're going to do differently going into sort of next year? I'm assuming you'll want to defend your title since, you know, you're still going to be the reigning champ. Uh, <laughs> is, is there is sort of any experiences that you've had that you're just going to be like, all right, well, that was a real learning experience. I'm mentally stronger now and that's going to make me a better athlete next year. Yeah, I I think I think just maybe not obsess so much over missing a few trainees because I remember before if I had like a a work trip for a week and I didn't get so much training in I thought it was the end of the world but I mean compared to missing 3 months and still being able to kind of recuperate from that I think just that is not going to make a, a huge difference just it's it's given a just perspective on on life and everything and and just to keep that with me that the I mean it's it's an important it's always going to be an important part of my life because mm. I use it also for just resetting my mind and and sort of my meditation might be swimming but um, for example but but also to have a perspective on on life that maybe sometimes you you have to do other things than just train all the time also and, and I want to be able to do other things in, in life than just training also so I think just managing to keeping it on a level that is good with and balancing everything else that that I want to also do in my life to spend time with with my friends and family and and do other things go on trips and and everything just just to have sort of a balance in, in life with with everything I think it's really have helped with that perspective, so to say. That's that's just so great to to hear. And I feel like, you know, your attitude, even from when we first met you and Catalina, like I remember telling Chipper, I was like, okay, well, you know, me and Fanny, they're they're just amazing human beings. And I feel like your ability to find that perspective in a really difficult situation as an elite athlete, um, I it's I'm just I'm just inspired. So so I I just think it's 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 so great. Yeah, I mean with these really drastic or almost like opposite polarizing things like you can do nothing and then you can't see family, you can't do a lot of stuff that really is core to who you are. Yeah, and like uh, echoing what Chris said, just the perspective of that is really and it's the same thing I think a lot of people are, are kind of going through is that we used to sw- we swim in this ocean. It's usually cold by my standards. And I would always bitch and complain about how cold the water is. And it would take me like five minutes to get in. And I'm like, oh, I can't go. It's too cold. I'm not ready. I have totally now, Chris will attest to this. I just charge into the water now. I'm like, I don't have time <laughs> to wait for if it's cold or not. I finally get to swim again and I'm just going to enjoy it. I, I, I can attest to that. And I think it's been really funny because whenever we used to go do swim runs or whatever in open water, uh, we need to we need a budget an extra 10 minutes for Chipper to kind of like a- acclimate to like to like <laughs> to to, to kind of just get his courage to get into the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. I think it also has helped me appreciate the the things that we have, like in, in going here in Barcelona to um, swim in the ocean it's it's amazing and uh, just running in nature and like everywhere we get to 
go to go to races and travel. It's it's just it's going to be easier to appreciate it from now on. And thinking back at this time, I think when we couldn't have it, it's it's definitely a big a big difference. It's like everything's moving at a million miles an hour. It feels like in in your day to day, and you everyone kind of gets just caught up in that you know the rat race, as they say. And this was a forced mm-hmm. uh, you know e break emergency break that everyone pulled on everything. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, you just probably deepen relationships with the people that you're close to and you're really more appreciative of, of every little bit that you have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. uh, Fanny, we, we will probably, uh, we, we definitely don't want to go without mentioning wild swim run. And I, we've been seeing Maya and I think you even joined in a camp. How has the wild swim run initiative been going for everybody? Yes, it's going, I mean, during this time, Obviously, we haven't been able to do our planned uh, bigger camps like that people have to travel for. So we have postponed, for example, the one that we were supposed to have in April is going to be in October now, hopefully, if everything goes well. Uh, but then, in uh, as you know, in Sweden, it's the restrictions have, have been a little bit different. So actually, Mia has been doing some events in Sweden with uh, uh, quite a few, actually, both yeah. family events and and uh, oh, and the kids and for the kids for events. women and oh. yeah, it's been great. And um, actually, when I was there, we I managed to join one of them also, and we we were out um, in, on one of the islands in Stockholm in Lidinga, and we did some uh, uh, a swim run workshop during the during the just during the day, and uh, we had I think we were. 15 people that joined us there and wow. uh, we had a great day. It was, it was a little bit chilly, uh, but we had some uh, equipment workshop and we uh, did some open water swimming, running technique, and and then a little s- swim run loop that we were, we were able to do. So we're, we're doing what we can and, and, and keep going. And as well with the, with the wild swim run club, we've gotten uh, quite a few members uh, now and um, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's, it's uh, we're, we're tagging along. Uh, despite uh, COVID, and we try to make things more digital and try to connect with everyone through uh, through the community. And uh, we even had a during the quarantine, we had um, a weekly workout together on Zoom as well. Mm-hmm. We will probably actually continue with these things in uh, in the fall also, because we thought it was it was it was fun and it's also a way that to connect with people all over the world. Because I think Swimrun right. is is such a global community. I mean here. I'm sitting talking with you guys from from the U.S. and I mean we have uh, we have girls from the U.S. also that join us joined us for those uh, Zoom workouts and we were from different countries in in Europe. I, I just think it's it's a, such a, so amazing that we can unite over a sport across countries and and continents. It's it's really cool and we want to try and uh, take advantage of that as well. I love it. I love so, yeah. it. I mean that's one of the things that I feel like, you know, sort of my affinity for Wild Swim Run when I first heard about it, when we, you know, started the show and started digging into Swim Run and why we wanted to have you and me on the show early on was was basically that. It's just, you know, this this global community is so great. Everybody's so welcoming and there's so much there's so much room to add people to it. And I think uh I I I just think it's awesome that you know, Wild Swim Run is, is is evolving like everybody else and mm-hmm. finding a way to, to to keep people engaged. And yeah, I mean, I love seeing all the pictures on Instagram, especially with right. the with the kids, like the kids' swim runs. I just love that stuff. Yeah, I, I like it, how it's they're, been really nice to see. Their pool buoys look like they're almost big enough to knock them over. Sometimes <laughs> when <they're running> around. <laughs> I know it's so cute. I, I mean, I hope then we can bring like the next generation of swim runners and the sport will be even bigger. So it'll, it'll be really cool. Absolutely. Well, Fanny, we really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us again under a little bit different circumstances. We're not on a dock in Catalina. Uh, a couple no. days before the race, you and Mia and us all gathered around microphones chatting. Yeah, that um, was that was five years ago, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> um, but where can people find out about about you if they want to follow your journey if they're not already on Instagram or whatever? And then uh, Wild Swim Run. Yeah, you can you can uh, follow Wild Swim Run on Instagram. It's just at Wild Swim Run, and my personal Instagram is. 
Fanny from SWE, like Sweden. Um, and then you can go into wildwomenswimrun.com for, for Wild Swim Run. And um, then we have the Wild Swim Run community on, on Facebook also, if you would like to join that group. Um, oh. But I think that's it. Yeah, you can find me on, on Facebook also under Fanny Kuhn. Nice. And we'll, I think that's it. Yeah. We'll be sure to include <laughs> all those links in the show notes. And um, yeah, again, just thanks a bunch for, for chatting. And it's always uh, always great to chat with you. Definitely. And we'll see like, you likewise. Uh, sooner than later, hopefully. Right. <laughs> yeah, I hope to see you guys soon, too. It was, it was, as always, great to speak to you. And thanks for the great work you're doing with the, with the Low Tide Voice Swim Run pod. It's, it's really great. And I look forward to every new episode that comes out. Oh, thank uh, you. Boy, really appreciate thank that. Thank you so much, Fanny. <laughs> uh, take care, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Sounds good. You, too. Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a Swim Run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for a newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. Yes. Or until run you to cross the, or, the finish line. Or run to the car. Or run to your car. Somewhere. Just keep running. Stop.